Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Welcome to the Artist Friends Podcast. This is episode 61 for September the 7th, our first episode for the month of September. My name is Clyde J. Kale, and I am here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. How are y'all doing this evening? Hello, Diane. (laughs) Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. I threw you off. You used to die. Yeah, I know. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it, folks. You see expressions on their faces. (laughs) It's fun to mix it up once in a while. Hey, you know? Okay. The theme for uh, this week's uh, podcast is the Ashcan School of Art. And for our listeners, if you go to www dot talk art podcast.com that's talk art podcast.com you'll see the links to the videos that explains a little bit about what the uh, ashcan school of art is and uh, also i selected uh, one of the artists uh, that came out of that uh, school as uh, george bellows and we'll talk a little bit about about their his art and uh, The Ashcan School of Art, I'm not going to uh, go into great detail. Actually, it wasn't a school, in a sense, as a school. It was a group of artists, they called themselves the Eight, a group of eight, that had had created a particular style. And not all of them even painted in in the style. Maybe only four or five of them, uh, uh, at least historians say, actually followed the particular Ashcan style. And um, they, uh, it was in the early 1900s, yeah, 19, 1910, 1911, I think something like that. And they were all in the uh, New York City, you know, area, n- New Jersey area on the East Coast. And um, their style was uh, very, uh, at that time, it was considered controversial. Uh, they were very uh, realistic and uh, were determined to uh, not to uh, adapt the so-called European modernist style. Because at that particular time, the European modernists were uh, uh, kind of like sweeping the world. And their style was basically a, a protest style. Diane, you want to start the conversation off? And talk a little bit about the Ash, Ashcan artists. 
Yeah, what what they basically painted was things they saw in their own lives and what was around them. And <clears throat> since they were artists and they weren't making tons of money, <laughs> they were in areas where they were, you know, the, the working people lived, and that's where they lived, and that was what they saw around them. And and there was a lot of poverty, and you know, just the um, the way the uh, city was getting built, and all the uh, industrial kind of stuff was coming into into the forefront and so they they depicted a lot of that and um it, a lot of the images seem kind of dark and um not like the pretty pictures not you know the pretty side of life <laughs> so a lot of people didn't like it because it kind of told a truth that they really didn't want to see <laughs> so you know, they had people that were, that really loved the style because it was showing things that no, they normally didn't see. And then there was the other side that thought they were horrible and all that for bringing all that stuff up. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, kind of, uh, they were, you know, the, <clears throat> they painted, the, you know, the immigrants and the uh, tenement sections of, uh, uh, of New York City. And uh, Constance, I'm going to ask you to see if you paid attention to the video. Where did the name Ashcan come from? It came from, it means garbage cans. <laughs> it's the same as garbage cans. And how did they get named that? Now that I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, there was, there was a, uh, an, art, an art critic who very much did not like their work. He was very snobbish. And he, he coined the term, well, these are not, nothing but a bunch of Ashcan artists. And he was being derogatory, and the the name kind of stuck, you know. With the when you think about it, when the impressionists were starting out, the word impressionist was at that when it was first coined was considered as an insult, and then it you know it stuck and it defined you know movement. So it's kind of like with the you know the Ashcan artists, you know it was it, it was considered an insult, but uh, it uh, it stayed with the uh, with with the artists and uh, they uh, they really uh, hit it big when they had the uh, I think what was it the the nineteen thirteen Armory show in New York. It was a it was a big uh, uh, international exhibition. In which they had artists from all over the world, and the uh, the Ashcan artists pretty much almost took over the show. They really became recognized because they had a lot of the European, you know, Cuba, Cubus and mar modern, and and they had Deschamps and and you know, and Picasso and and you know all these, and these Ashcan artists. Uh, the press just uh, really went nuts over their work, that these were American artists who were at a par and were even superior to the European artists. And that's when they really kind of launched their, uh, you know, their movement beyond you know, everything. You guys want to add anything more to that? or? Um, well, other than uh, that they really depicted the life of, the common people, and that was not something that was done back then. It was mainly, um, I guess there was some Impressionist in France that did some depictions like of people out on the lake and things like that. But um, but they were all light. there was nobody really. Yeah, but they were all light and colorful and right. um, pretty pretty kind of pictures. Right, where these were kind of dark and gritty and. Um, Yep. Just showed a lot of the underlying stuff that was going on, like the boxing and you know the way people had to live in the tenements and all that. So it was, it was a stark contrast to what people had been used to seeing. Exactly, and that leads us to one of the artists who came out of the Ashcan movement which is uh, George Bellows, and he really George Bellows. Uh, he he became more famous for his uh, paintings of boxers, you know, of the of, of the fights, and his paintings were very very dark and gritty. And he even painted the 
the the uh, audience with the expressions on their face faces of uh, you know screaming and look like you know murder in their eyes and were <laughs> and, and, scary looking yeah, and the boxers were you know were were very uh, it was very a lot of what we call movement you know you, you look at his paintings and you can you can envision yourself there at ringside you know and and uh, I. I pretty much I, I like of the Ashkin art. I like George Bellows' work the best. The, the best. I really enjoy his work. And one particular piece, when you talk about the uh, the common people, he did a scene, uh, a, a piece called uh, Cliff Dwellers, where it showed these uh, tenement apartments. You know, all uh, close by and uh, up high, and all the different people, you know, some people are hanging out the windows and other people are, you know, are on the balconies and he's got a street vendor below. And he even has, and this is the thing, nobody notices it and uh, talks about this, but I noticed it right away. Over on the far right-hand side, he actually has a woman nursing a child. She's not completely exposed, but you know what's going on. <laughs> I mean... For night, and I think that was painted like in 1915, 1917, something like that. I mean, that would be shocking, you know, for that yeah, time period. And for that time, that was avant garde. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, because when you think of New York, New York City, that's what you think of, you know, that, that is, uh, you know, a, a typical reminder of a classical scene of new york city yeah people all crowded in and in a narrow street and and it's uh very much uh, the, the other closest thing that ever comes to it is a norman rockwell painting where it shows a, a moving van uh that's in a real tight alley and there's tall buildings on either side and a little kid is you know get, grabbing a ball in front of the van and the guy's looking out you know yeah i mean that's a, a city scene that's in itself there that's the closest thing that comes to the same, giving you that same feeling and movements and everything. what do you guys think about George Bellows? Diane, I'll let you go. Yeah. I mean, he depicted, well, they showed a lot of his work or we saw a lot of his work. So, and it, it was all, um, he had quite a few, he went through a few different phases though, of different um, types of work that he did, um, which was interesting. Um, cause some of the stuff that he was doing later on of uh, landscapes and stuff up in Maine were nothing like the city, city street, uh, depictions. Uh -oh. I was quite surprised about that. Um, it was, it didn't even look like it was the same artist. He, he had the style had changed quite a bit just from being in a different environment, I guess. I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. It was after he got married, then he had children mm -hmm. and they used to go up and spend time in uh in the country and he would paint while he was there and it was a totally different feel to his work than his city work the stuff that he did of the city because when he was you know i guess when he lived in the city when he was poor he lived in the poorer parts of town so that's what he painted which really shed a lot of light on on what it was like to be in that environment and that life where a lot of other artists had never gone there before with their work, you know, so. Exactly. I mean, his, his work was very, uh, uh, documentary or doc, documentary style, historical, you know, and, and, uh, because photography wasn't as, as prevalent as it is now. I mean, you know, everybody's got a, you know, a, 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 a camera on their phone and, you know, take, take pictures everywhere. But back then, artists, uh, that was how, you know, they uh, documented things, you know. So, it was, you know, very fortunate. Historians look at the, his paintings and other artists of that period to, to get an idea of what the, uh, you know, what life was like, you know, in the big cities, you know. And especially in the, uh, the immigrant sections of town, which were usually the, the poor economically uh, – poor side you know they were all packed in really tight you know and the tenement yeah it had to be a hard way to live you know it had to be everybody the whole family's living in one room basically 
with yep. the kitchenette in there. And that's, that's pretty hard life. Yep. I bet. Yeah. And they didn't have, you know, central heating and, and uh, central plumbing, you know, <laughs> like, we, like we uh -uh. Did. and even uh, I, I watched a documentary about, uh, you know, one of my favorite artists, Thomas Hart Benton, when he was young, when him and his wife first got married, they lived in New York and they lived, they lived up in a, uh, you know, a seven story building and he had to carry coal up the stairs the 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 heat in the heating stove during the winter time, you know. He, he, that's that's what is, that's a hard life, you know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine what those, you know, those. Uh, uh, yeah, and then each floor. If I I've stayed in a place kind of like that in Ohio once, and we stayed on the upper floor, and it was we didn't have to do the heating ourselves. It was. I guess the radiators on the wall, but it used to get so hot up there and cause the heat just goes up. And, but the thing about it is we didn't have any running water in our room that we were living in all the running water. We had, if we wanted some water or anything, we had to go down to the big bathroom at the end of the floor, you know, so everybody used that bathroom, you know, to go to the bathroom or anything, you know, so that's that's what it was like. That's what it was like. Since I, I since I lived in yeah you know, lived in Italy for about sixteen years, in the uh, older sections of uh, the city in Naples, when I see George Bellows' uh, paintings, it reminds me so much of those sections because it's like that. The streets are all crowded, except you know they have cars are usually double and triple parked, and you can barely get down the street. <laughs> And and the uh, the the with the balconies and everybody's laundry is always hanging out over the balcony and if you're walking down the streets you gotta be careful because if it's if it's wash day you're gonna get wet because somebody's <laughs> laundry is dripping on you yeah but it was but uh, it used to you know the, the smell yes that's when it's good to live on the top floor when the water's dripping down from. <laughs> <laughs> your laundry to somebody else's laundry. It would be good not to be on the bottom floor. <laughs> the, Until something falls off the line. <laughs> Nick all the way down to get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> During the summertime, you know, when it's hot and they get all the windows open, you know, and you hear, you hear the music and everything. You always knew where the old people, uh, the older people uh, lived because their TVs and radios were blasting because they couldn't hear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when I see was looking at those George Bellows paintings, that's all those memories came flooding back. You know, when I would, uh, when I was single and I walk around, you know, living in the city. Living in the city is, it's it's fun, and if you're young, I guess, and you can take it, it's okay. But wow, it's a hard way to live. It really is. I feel like. Oh, and then there, you know, but, like, it's great that he documented all that, you know, because a lot of artists didn't. Yeah, and but a lot of artists, you know, they just want to paint the, the pretty, the beautiful things, you know, the flowers or the... Uh, well, yeah, I'm even guilty of that, wanting to paint pretty paintings. Or the, the upper, or a lot the, of people are. Yeah, the upper class people, the, the rich patrons, you know, that paid them so, you know, and the... the uh, the, the 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 middle class, the lower class, the blue collars, whatever term you want to use, those people always got excluded, you know. And and these fellows, uh, the Ashcan artists, you know, thankfully, at least during their time period, they did that. They uh, they documented that and they painted that. And I, I I'm thankful for for you know for their art, you know, and everything. Um, we want to wrap this up. This is probably going to be a short, short podcast. I don't have any. Have you two got anything else you want to add to that? No, not really. <laughs> I think we pretty got, well covered it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a little bit shorter version here because uh, we uh, just, I think we're just getting wore out being locked up all the time. And <laughs> I do want to say that Constance has been hot the trot painting she's been trying to win some kind of a contest so she has to paint every day uh for like 30 days so with the uh youtube version 
I am going to post all of her paintings she's done this last week. I, you didn't know that, huh? I, that's why I've been. Great. I didn't. I've been. Thank great. you. <laughs> Shot every every time. I'm going to put up, put it up there. Some are better than others, but you know it is what it is. You do a painting. You have been. And, you know, you have been hot, girl. You have really been painting a lot, you know, and and so. Uh, Diane, well, it's not like I don't need it. <laughs> you have time to work on anything since I, I, the last, the last YouTube version. I don't know if you saw that. I, I put those images you sent to me that you were work in progress images. I put those in there. But have you got any other? No, I, I didn't see them. No, I haven't. I haven't. I'm still. Those are still on the easel. <laughs> I'm not decided yet if they're done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's in the but, uh, the the last week's uh, episode sixties uh, YouTube version. I. Because you had sent them to me the week before, which we, we were supposed to do, and then I didn't, you know, I canceled out. So I went ahead and since you guys, made, you guys were spot on on uh, sending me your images. And, uh, <laughs> so I decided to, you know, I included them with uh, last week's uh, episode 60, the YouTube version. So our listeners, if you want to see some of the artwork of Diane and Constance, just uh, go to the YouTube channel. You're... Uh, uh, they're actually uh, on the uh, 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 the www.talkartpodcast.com. There's a link there to the uh, the link to the previous episodes of uh, each artist friends podcast. It's the YouTube version that I I put up there, so you can uh, click on it and uh, hear what we talk about, but also see see some of our artwork. Okay. Cool. Uh, you two got anything, any announcements you want, want to make or anything coming up here or no, not at the no. moment. <laughs> yep. all I would pretty much wiped out all of that stuff. <laughs> all we're doing is just painting and trying to keep yep. motivated, keep, keeping motivated, keeping happy, painting and yep. farming and <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, then that's going to do it for this episode of the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 61 for September the 7th, 2020. And I, my name is Clyde J. Kale, and I'm going to say bye-bye to Diane and Constance, and then I'll let Diane and Constance say goodbye in turn. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye, folks. And I, like I always say, if you enjoy these podcasts, please send us a comment, so give us a thumbs up, give us a star rating, show us some love, please. We need it. Thanks for listening, folks. Bye-bye. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt, Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kim. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C B R O S N A N S. Clyde J. Kim at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.